That's how it is. Hello, morning. My name is Naughty Snack. Hey, Naughty, how are you? I haven't seen you such a long time. Hello. You feel good? Yeah. All right. Hello, I'm okay. Mommy, the back there. Okay. Hey. Hi, 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 how are you, how are you, how are you? Good, good, good. Looks so much like I'm playing with the How you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. Good
words to say before uh, the, funeral, the service started. <laughs> testing, testing. Testing, testing. Testing. Yeah, no, we run out of time. Just elevator first. Tell them hopefully they can get out. Yeah, go ahead. Just hold it. Hi, I'm sorry, but because of time, I think I just have to start now. So, thank you all for coming to celebrate the life of my grandmother, Linda Graves, a mother, sister, a wife, neighbor, and a friend. And to pay our respects as she embarks, embarks on her journey to meet the Lord. Linda De Silva was born on December 7, 1934. For the first part of her life, she lived in Georgetown. Then at one point after she was married to my grandfather, the couple briefly resided in Arnesville. Then along with their young family, they relocated to Dossetcher Hill, where she spent the remainder of her days. During her life, she raised seven children to adulthood and was instrumental in founding past enterprises in 1975. She dedicated her life to her family she was a devout homemaker, not only skilled in sewing, crocheting, cooking, and baking, but entrepreneurial skills in short. Just, uh, just elevate your voice. Her entrepreneurial skills. Sorry, the last one. In short, her guava jelly and guava cheese were always in plenty supply. All while at the same time, baking us birthday cakes every year. She also loved gardening. She turned her home into a lush oasis. Small beds, bird baths, fruit trees of all descriptions. Throughout the years, she hired many workers to assist her, many of whom she treated as an extended family member. Never a day went by when she wouldn't give them a sandwich and a cup of coffee in the morning and a full meal at lunch. She was a devout Christian. She put her faith into her practice in the way she lived her life, her teachings to us, and how she treated others. None no more so than myself. When I was little, I couldn't say the word grandma, but could say it instead, Gama, which me and my sister continue to call her today. Gama's love and affection for my sister and I played a huge role in shaping who we are as individuals today. Our relationship deepened after my father died, as she was a source of comfort and providence. As I spent the intervening two years before my migration to Canada, my grandmother supported me while I took time to grieve and heal. And for that, I'll always be grateful. The last decade of her life were incredibly challenging for her. She lost her husband and her son in a period of just seven months and had to cope with health issues over the last few years of her life. In spite of these emergencies that would have crumpled her life, of course, and she found the fortitude to endure it all and would still offer me a smile and a kiss every time I saw her. I will miss her, but I will take comfort in knowing that her trials are over and she has gone to a place where she will only know serenity. I would like to end on a prayer Brahma would say over us at the end of every day. It's from Numbers 6, 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Thank you. And again, sorry I had to rush, but because of time.
Our opening hymn this morning, I heard the voice of Jesus say, hymn number 500 in your leaflet.
and we pray and have it open to her the gates of larger life. You wait to see from one going to your joyful service. That we all have served in the past. She may share the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, the rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up the death, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23 verse 1 Psalm 23 is found in our Book of Common Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. The New Testament lesson is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18 and will be read by Jean Wood. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, 
with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. This is the Gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well aged wine of rich food filled with marrow, of wedded wine strained and clay. The question that immediately comes out of that passage is how does death taste? And one then begins to think of some of the traditional foods that we eat in St. Vincent. We begin to think of some of the traditions and how each of them have associated with it a particular dish. But more profoundly, we ask ourselves, how is God going to renew us, refresh us? And the passage goes on to say that he will wipe away death forever. Those of us who have experienced the death of a loved one know how absolutely vital it is to have a support system. And invariably, that support system involves persons who will not only seek to give you some word of comfort but from time to time we'll find out how you're doing are you eating well can I bring something over and so at the heart of the grieving process is an association with food For the rabbit Pentecostal, they may not want to hear about well-aged wines. But for those of an Anglo-Catholic spirit, well-aged wines absolutely necessary. It speaks of the mellowing of the spirit. Which one? 
would need through such a process. And yet, as we say that, we have to wonder what comes with that well-aged wine. And in light of the one for whom this funeral service is conducted, one that has to know one's spirits and know which ones are supposed to go with pastor. I'm going, I'm going to change. I'm going to change. <laughs> but even as our stomachs are treated and we eat in the comfort and presence of those who care and, and are concerned about us, there are other aesthetics that assist us as well in the mourning and grieving process. And one of those is the beauty of flowers. We have here this morning, as we do at most funerals, except when the family asks that in lieu of flowers, a donation be given to some charitable organization. And the different arrangements seek to bring out the colorfulness of what is in our gardens. But they're meant to lighten our spirits, even as we are told at funerals, the appropriate and accepted color is black, white, or purple. All of those colors suggesting mourning, grieving, sadness, sorrow. And so what you see at a funeral service or a funeral mass is an interplay of the complexity of life unfolding right before us. Though we are grieving, we also are aware that the very God whom we worship seeks to dry our tears and gives us moments of refreshment. And as we look at the beautiful arrangements, in a strange sort of way, they warm our hearts. And for those who knew Linda well, knew that she loved flowers. And in fact, she made it her business, because of her love of her church, to seek to provide flowers for the church. And so it is right and appropriate that we should have such beautiful floral arrangements here this morning to complement the atmosphere, the setting. And so even as we think of St. Paul writing to us and saying, Oh death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We do so, hearing his resounding reply. But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, who has given us the victory. And so even in the midst of our scripture, in that powerful passage from 1 Corinthians, 15 that speaks about death and resurrection. We come within the context of this funeral service to understand that interplay 
between grief and sorrow. And the aesthetic beauty of flowers and how they can enlighten our spirits and if just for a brief moment help us in alleviating the grief of the moment and so when we hear from Isaiah the 25th chapter the 6th to the ninth verse having spoken about preparing a banquet for his people a banquet that is meant to help them through these difficult times the writer goes on to say and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples the sheet that is spread over all nations and he will swallow up death forever. It is this that helps us to be able to have solemn services like these, orderly and dignified for our deceased loved ones. But to do so, as Thessalonians will tell us, not as those who grieve without hope. Not as those who grieve without hope. We acknowledge, yes, that grieving is part of the process of losing someone who we know, cared for, and love. But even in the midst of that grieving, life continues. That is the harsh reality. And we have to pick up the pieces of our lives and continue. And we continue knowing that death does not have the final word. And if there is anything that stands out in terms of the Christian faith, it's that concept, that idea. And it is shown to us by none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. In his early life, he ministered to many, but in ministering, he upset some and he got the political and religious authorities so riled up that they sought a way to silence him. And the very method that they used to silence him became a resounding rallying cry. But even more importantly, God vindicated him and on the third day he rose again and so when we look at our Good Friday and Easter it is one continuous event that reminds us that God seeks to swallow up death forever and he has done so in his son Jesus the Christ And we can never ever be closer to Jesus than when he feeds us. And he feeds us through the Eucharistic elements that reminds us of our eternal destiny and that comforts us in the midst of difficult sorrowful times and so the importance of the culinary arts during the mourning and grieving period is not only sociological
but it is also spiritual. And to the moments that the family will share, and those who are able to share with them, will be filled with social meaning, but also spiritual meaning. Granted, we can say that this is a social gathering. But it is more than that. And not because it is done within the context of a building that we call church. But because in this moment, all of us will contemplate our own mortality. And it will give us a moment of pause as we think, how does death taste? Is it pilau? Or was preferred and selfish? Or is it pasta? <laughs> On this mountain, God will swallow up death forever. But he does so by firstly comforting us through our taste buds. May God in Christ continue to support, strengthen, and nourish us even in the midst of grief and sorrow. Amen. Amen. And so confidence and hope we stand and affirm our faith. Our belief in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered on the cross.
the Book of Common Prayer. Give rest to Christ to your servant with your sins. We are so pain and neither shine but light and rest. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all of humanity. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia! 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 Give rest to all Christ to your servant with your sins. We are sovereign and pain and neither shall we but life and everlasting. Let us commend our sister Linda to the mercy of God our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Linda, our sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation. For the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the sin of the world. And forgive us our sins, 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 a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeemed. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. Amen. We sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, 491.
there is opportunity on behalf of the family here in Church of Ascension to extend our deepest condolences to the family of our late sister in the grave and also prayer from Deacon Bobina Danza is unable to be present. Extends our condolences. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving life to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open his kingdom to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise, may the angels 